And imagine that you have wronged this person. You have done something against this person. The problem what manner will is you go the spiritual world. It is because he has neglected the, the Prophet spiritual. told them. While he pointed at this pile, he says, in this manner, so the sins example, accumulate. If they acted bad against someone, when you ask them, he says, no, that's not what I meant. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His beloved and pure messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his immaculate and pure progeny, especially the leader and the imam of our time, Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance and make us amongst his noble, true and sincere companions and servants. In our previous discussion, we spoke about the importance of raising children and what approach to take in raising children. We mentioned that there are two types of advice. When we educate our children, we must keep in mind these two types of giving advice. The first was to remind, and the second is to establish a new concept in their mind. Because when they are young and they originate, they are ignorant to the surrounding environment and the surrounding world around them. So it is a very grave, it is a very great and significant responsibility to raise our children. This is an obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has imposed on every parent. But this, to carry out this obligation, to fulfill this responsibility, it starts with educating our children, with teaching our children. Early, not later in life, not in their stage of adolescence, for example, or even slightly before that. But when they are young and emerging as proper human beings, functional human beings in society, we must keep it in mind that we must educate them and raise them properly. However, before we give our advice to our children, before we attempt to educate them, we must keep something very important in our minds. And that is to understand their mentality, how they think, what kind of outlook they have on life. We have to understand their delicate and innocent spirit. This is extremely important. Because when you are trying to convey an idea, a concept to another human being, if you're giving an example, if you're giving an analogy to bring the concept closer to someone, you have to be familiar with the mentality of that person. Otherwise, they really can't connect with what you're saying. They won't understand where you're coming from, from what angle you're coming from. Therefore, it will be extremely difficult for them to digest what you're telling them and understand and comprehend what you are trying to convey to them. Similarly, every child has a very unique and simple line of reasoning, chain of understanding. We must be familiar with this line of reasoning, with their mentality, in order for us to give them advice. Otherwise, we might be giving advice thinking that we are fulfilling our obligation and responsibility but at the end of the day, we find that there is absolutely no effect to what we're saying or a very minor effect due to the reason of not understanding their mentality. So it's extremely important to be familiar first with how they think, with their mentality, with their mindset. After that, we can build on it and go forward, proceed by instilling in them the proper values the moral values, the scientific values, the educational values through a proper method and in a way, in a manner that they can easily understand and digest. So now we understand that there's a great responsibility that rests on the, shoulder of ev on the shoulders of every parent. And this great responsibility is to look after their children, look out for their children, educate them, raise them properly. So we understand this point and we understand that we have to convey it in a manner in which they can relate to and which they, through which they, to which they can connect. 
But what is it exactly that we teach them? There's so much knowledge in this world. So many areas of studies in the science field, in the educational field, in the scientific field, in the educational field, that really someone would kind of be lost to look and scope the landscape of all of the knowledge that exists in this world. And people do get confused. And every day a new a science comes out, a new area of study comes out, a new area of specialty comes out, a new set of information and facts come out. So what is it that exactly we should teach them at first in order for us to be successful, in order for us to convey this responsibility and fulfill this responsibility that we have towards our children. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that even at this level, He has not left us without a guide. If we want to understand, we have to go to our life manual, to the book of guidance. And that is the Holy Quran, this holy book of Allah, which has laid out everything for us, everything in our lives, Everything that we need to live successfully is presented in this powerful book of guidance from our Creator who has authored this book Himself, which, directs, which directly comes from our Creator. So in order to understand what we should teach our children, we refer to the chapter of Luqman. This beautiful short chapter, it's only maybe three or four pages long. It's not that long. However, it presents very valuable lessons. It teaches us how we should interact with our children, what we should teach our children. In this great chapter, and Luqman himself, after whom the chapter is named, was a very wise man, a very great human being, whom Allah gave wisdom. Allah gave him everything that he wanted. Allah asked him, do you want the world? What do you want? He says, no, Allah, for you, I will leave the world, materialism, the materialistic life. Due to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now I will give you wisdom. Because you have left the world, I will endow you with the power of wisdom. He was very wise, this great man. In order to understand how we should treat our children, what to teach them, we use him as an example. He is the epitome, the great example of how a father should speak to his son of how a parent should speak to his or her child, how to address them, how to speak to them, how to present something for them in a manner that they can accept, that their mind, that their very young mind can digest. And this is a very beautiful chapter. This man who is so compassionate, if you look at the way that he speaks to his son, you will see that he is full of compassion. He is a very responsible parent and we learn from him. Now one might ask that, we understand that there's an obligation that rests on our shoulders as parents. But why do we necessarily teach them certain facts or certain concepts when they're young? Let them now be free, let them have the freedom of choosing what they want to do in their life, of what they want to teach. And then once they become more intellectual, once their mind and brain becomes more developed, it is at that stage and at that time that we begin to speak to them and instill to them. Of course, this is extremely incorrect to, de to delay this to a later stage in life. As soon as a child begins to understand and comprehend, it is at this stage that we must cater to their intellectual needs, to further their intellectual development by establishing new teachings to them. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali alayhi salam, in a very beautiful statement says, and all of his statements are full of wisdom and beauty. He says, Al-ilmu fi sighar kan naqshi ala al-hajar. He says, to seek knowledge in childhood is like engraving something on a stone. When you engrave something on a stone, it will never leave. It will be very difficult for you to erode that engravement. Similarly, when you learn something when you're small, when your mind is alert, it's very productive in the sense of understanding the world and relating to the world. The reaction that the mind has in infants and in children is much greater than the reaction that an adult's mind has. And this has been established scientifically. Therefore, at that stage, when you learn something, it will stick with you for the rest of your life. The way your father 
treated your mother, the way he reacted with her, the way he argued with her, this has an imprint that will stay in your mind till the rest of your life. You will never forget that. You might forget what happened three, four, five months ago, years ago, decades ago, but you will never forget what happened in your childhood. The basic ideas that occurred in your childhood. Not specifically learning facts. No, children are not that good at learning facts. But in, for example, perceiving the world, perceiving how to behave, and developing your personality and behavior. This is the time, the time of childhood that this needs to be worked on. Furthermore, we see that education in the eyes of Islam, in the eyes of our Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his family, is so important that the Prophet in one statement states that amongst the very important responsibilities and obligations of a father is to teach his or her, his, his, his son or daughter, he must teach them to be literate, must teach them how to write. وَيُعَلِّمَهُ الْكِتَابَ This is extremely important. Now one day, these days one might ask that, well, it's very easy and very common that a child knows how to write. But we have to understand the context in which the Prophet made the statement. At that time, 14 centuries ago in the Arabian Peninsula, in the Arabian society, the majority of people didn't know how to read or write. They were illiterate. Illiteracy was common, was the norm in their society. So for the Prophet to say that amongst the very important obligations of a father to teach his or her daughter, to, to teach his son or his daughter to read and write is extremely important. It puts a great emphasis on the obligation of a father to educate his child or his child, his son or his daughter. So when we look at this chapter, the chapter of Luqman, we see that he gives advice and teaches his son in four areas, four very important areas. By doing so, he will secure the faith, the success, and the future of his child. The first area of advice that he gives to his son is the pillars of faith, to deal with the pillars of faith. For example, such as our origin, who created us, where we came from, and our destiny, the hereafter, the day of judgment, where we will end up in the future. This is extremely important because it keeps everyone in check. When your child knows that someone is watching him, when there's a creator observing every of his actions, and knowing that there will be a day of judgment in which everything that he has done and committed in this life will be accounted for, they will keep themselves in check. It will be very unlikely and not that possible for them to deviate, to sin, to oppress someone, to take the right of someone, to encroach on someone's rights, because they will fear their Creator and know that, is a, that there is a day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the words of Luqman, this wise man, states in the Holy Quran, Ya bunayya innaha in takumithqala habbatin min khardal. He's speaking to his son in a very compassionate manner in the Arabic language. He says, Oh my son, know that if there is a small seed, a small mustard seed, a very small seed that can be barely visible to the eye. Min khardal in fatakun fi sakhratin aw fi samawati aw fi lard yati lahu biha. Know that if there is a small seed in a rock, embedded in a rock, or in the skies, or in the earth. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it and can bring it forth. By doing so, He's teaching the pillars of His faith. He is teaching the foundation. He's teaching in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's teaching Him that there's a hereafter, that Allah knows of everything. If He knows that there's a seed in a rock, or in the skies, or in the earth, what about our actions? Can he be ignorant of them? He's keeping in check. He's indirectly teaching that whatever you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, hears, and will account for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees, he is aware. This should be instilled in childhood, not later on in life, because later on in life, it does not have that profound impact and effect on people. This is done in childhood. You teach them where we came from, our origin, why we're even here. 
You teach them who they are. It's very important to understand your origin because without understanding your origin and why you're here and the, and the philosophy of why you're created, how will you understand yourself? In order to understand something, to advance, you must be, you must have full knowledge of it. You must, you must encompass it. You must be familiar with it. By being familiar with your origin, with your future, with the philosophy of why you are created, you can come to know yourself better. This is why, this is why one tradition states, Man nafsa faqad rabba. He who knows himself knows his Lord. This must be instilled in childhood. They say that one day a father who was a devious person, who was very irreligious, took his son, who was very religious and properly raised by his mother, to a garden. He told him, my son, listen, you stay at the gate over here while I go inside the garden and steal some fruits. Then he tells his son, look, my son, if anyone passes by or if he sees someone approaching, immediately inform me so I can disappear or act as if I'm just over here, you know, just wandering around the garden so that no one will know that I'm stealing. He says, okay, dad, you go do your job and I'll stay here. If anyone sees us, I'll let you know. So the father goes, he's happy, he's stealing all these nice fruits from the garden of someone. He is intruding on his rights, on his property, on what he owns. Suddenly he hears his son screaming and yelling. He says, father, father, stop. So the father, he's afraid. He, th he thinks that someone's approaching. So he runs to him. He says, what, my son? Is someone coming? Did you see something? He says, yes, someone is seeing us. Then his son says that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing us. I looked around and even though you asked me to inform you of who is seeing us, I realized that uh, my creator who knows everything is seeing me. They say that after this incident, his father changed. This irreligious person who was deviant due to the powerful and effective words of his own son, due to the upbringing of his wife, of the child's mother, he changed and he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he he became a good believing servant of Allah who avoided stealing and such acts. This is the power of raising the children. However, what this, child, this child did, the way he advised his own father by saying that God is watching us, doesn't happen randomly, something arbitrarily. This stems from the teachings of his mother. So this is the first area that we should teach our children. The second area that we should teach our children, which is extremely important, are, is the branches of faith. This is extremely important because it serves as the manifestation, as the result, as the fruition of the faith, of the pillars of faith. So now we have the faith, we've installed the faith in our, the faith in our children. What's next? What's the point of this faith? What's the fruition of this faith, the results? It's like studying in college. You study, you study for so many years, your parents pay tens of thousands of dollars for your tuition. And then after that, you do nothing. You simply sit home without work, jobless, unemployed. Then your parents will object to, you know, exactly what did you do? How is it that you studied for all of this time and there's no result? You should go seek an employment, seek a job, do something worthy and valuable with your life. It is similar with the branches of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to instill these branches in ourselves and in our children for these are the fruition and the result of the faith that we all have and instill in our, in, in our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Luqman says, Ya bunayya aqim as-salat wa'mur bil ma'roof wanha anul munkar. This compassionate, wise Luqman, the father is teaching his son. He says, my son, make sure that you pray. Establish prayer. Make sure that you always make this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always enjoin the good and forbid the evil. To protect a society, to create a harmonious society. This is extremely important for the well-being of society. So he is teaching him the branches of faith in order for him to be successful, in order to allow him and to teach him that what you've learned, the pillars of the faith, the iman is all very important coupled with the actions. This is of the second step. This is very extremely powerful. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always make us successful in teaching our children these important concepts. The first 
is to teach them the faith. The second, how to practice the faith. And by the will of the Almighty God in our following discussions, we will speak of the two other very important areas that we should all stress on when we speak to our children. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.